Welcome to the third video on the complete Python course by Crowd Course Initiative. I am Amsi Chamakura and in this module we will examine what a string in Python is and how we can manipulate them using Python's provided string operations. Strings are probably the first data structures that you will encounter in Python. A data structure does nothing other than storing and managing single pieces of information together so that you can access them easily later. In other words, a data structure makes it easier for you to access and manipulate the stored data for later usage. Strings are probably the simplest of all the data structures that you will be seeing in Python. They take in or are compatible with various data types including characters, numbers, etc. In the next part of this video, I am going to show you how to create strings. To declare a string, simply put something you desire in a pair of single or double quotes. It doesn't matter which one that you choose. And that's it. When you hit the enter button, the string that you just created will be shown on your screen. However, you can also create a string first and then assign it to a variable so that Python will think this variable is the string and later when you want to access the string, you can type the variable name. Working with very long strings is hard. It is not recommended to write large strings in the same line according to good coding standards. Python lets you define such long strings using triple quotes. You can see an example of this on your screen. Now let's talk about string operations. In this slide, we are going to look at concatenation, repetition, and membership. Concatenation and repetition can be considered as ways to generate desired new strings quickly. Concatenation is connecting two or more strings together. Repeating is appending the given string to the end of itself and repeat this operation multiple times. You can specify the number by putting an integer after the multiplication sign. Membership is another way of saying check whether h is in a. So you simply type h in a and Python will output a boolean value for you. Remember that we talked about boolean values in our first video? Do you still remember it? There is one more point worth mentioning. You can do a variety of things on strings. However, no matter what you do, the original string is still there. It's not altered. This means every time you perform a certain action on a string, a new string will be created while the old one is still there. We will illustrate this by a couple of examples. As being shown by the string variables a and b, you can add them together or you can have three a's concatenated together using repetition. However, these two operations don't alter a or b themselves. If you want the original string to be altered, you can assign the new value to the original string, as illustrated by a equal to a plus b and a equal to a into 3. Python doesn't have a char or character type which are available in other languages. Instead, Python uses strings of length 1 to represent a single character. Let's take a closer look at the above example. The corresponding indices for each character would be 0, 1, 2, so on till 10. And we can use the array syntax as var1 of 0 to reference particular letters. One important thing that needs to be emphasized is that indices start from 0, which is different from a mathematical indexing. So when you want to access the nth character in a certain string, then you should call n-1. Also, the last example warns you never to go out of range, otherwise Python will not be happy and the program you write will terminate. So, Although string indices is a concept easy to understand, it might cause serious errors if you don't pay proper attention to it. In the next slide, we are going to talk about how to get a slice or a part of a string with more than one character. In the example shown on your screen, extracting a substring from a string, also known as slicing, has been done. We store the string I love Python in a variable called my favorite lang. We then slice the string from indices 1 to 9, both inclusive. One of Python's coolest features is the string format operator percentage. This operator is unique to strings and makes up for the lack of having functions like C's printf family. Take the example on your screen. My name is percentage %s and I am super percentage %s. The percentage operator acts as a placeholder for the value that a variable is storing. There are different percentage operators for different data types. For example, percentage %o is used for octal numbers. Percentage %s, which we just saw in the above example, is used for strings. Percentage %d for signed decimal integers and percentage %f for floating real numbers. Python comes with a lot of useful and powerful built-in functions for strings. In this final section, we will be dealing with string functions. Let us go ahead and look at a few of them. The first one is capitalize. This function converts the first letter of the string to uppercase. 
You can use this function by calling dot capitalize on your string as shown in an example on your screen. Next up is the lower function. This method converts the entire string to lowercase. Nothing happens to the string if it is already in lowercase. Using this function is as simple as calling the dot lower function on your string or string variable. Next up we have strip. The strip function is probably one of the most commonly used functions when someone is processing or validating a string. This function removes all the leading and trailing white spaces in the string. This method is also invoked like the previous two that is by calling the dot strip on the string. Next is the length function. The length function like its name suggests returns the length of the string. Unlike the function that we have seen till now, the invocation of this function is a bit different than the previous ones. To invoke this function, we pass the string as a parameter to the length function. Moving on to a bit more complex functions, next up we have the find function. This method lets you search for a string in another string and returns the starting index of the first occurrence. This function takes many other optional parameters like the index to start and end your search. By default, these parameters are zero and the length of the string respectively, that is spanning the search over the entire string. The next function we'll be looking at is the join function. This method takes a sequence of strings and joins them by a delimiter string provided. The sequence can be a list, tuple, or any other iteratable data type. The syntax of, for this function is delimiter dot join and pass a sequence as a parameter to the join function. The next function that we'll be looking into is the split function. The split function is another widely used function for text processing. The function takes as input a delimiter string and a string to be split. It also takes an optional parameter that limits the number of elements in the output list to the provided parameter plus one. Next, and our final function is the upper function. This function converts the entire string to uppercase. Nothing happens if the string is already in uppercase. Using this function is as simple as calling the dot upper function on your string or string variable. Thanks for watching.